Today, I am releasing a massive update to my free popular energy effects plugin for DaVinci Resolve Proto. I've been working on this for a little while now. I am so excited to finally release it. And in this video, I'll walk you through some of the basics of installation, the scope of the presets. Uh, spoiler, there are actually uh, three different effects all in this plugin in different parts of Resolve. It gets pretty crazy, but I tried to pack a, a whole lot in here for you. And I'm going to uh, quickly cover as much of that as I can at a surface level in this video. A download link is in the description for you to grab the preset right now, but stick around to get a better idea of what this free preset can do. Let's get started. If you've grabbed any other of my free presets or my paid products, uh, this one is a little different. When you download the effect, you will get this protov2.lua file. Normally, I've packaged up my uh, presets and templates as DRFX files, uh, but this is a little different because of some of the specific power I have packed in here. And to install this, you just need to head over to the Fusion page, and then you can drag drag this right into the node viewer. And then pretty soon you should get this pop-up saying that it has been installed. Please close and reopen DaVinci Resolve to finalize. You can click okay and then just restart Resolve. I've done that. Now I will hop over to the edit page and we can start having some fun. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure my effects library is open over here. Come down to generators, open up Sterling Supply Company and there I will see Proto V2 and I can drag that right to my timeline. And here you'll see this circle. And by default, one small wrinkle I haven't been able to iron out um, is that you won't always see the final version of the effect when it initially loads on. You'll see here you have some pretty extreme banding, but if you come to any of these settings and, and even open up a label or toggle the size or something, uh, that should kick in and you'll have the full view. It's not quite as evident in this uh, default preset, but it's something to be aware of. But this is Proto. By default, you have this standard circle shape and in the inspector, if you don't have that open, you can toggle that over here and here and you have all the custom controls for Proto. The first version of Proto had uh, a row of numbers where you could toggle between different presets. But for this update, I have added this presets tab here. I can click that and here I have 10 included presets. The one that loads up by default is this first simple, but we've got this nice wavy purple one with the core sort of wobbles around. We have this super bright uh, sunspot one. It's like tons of glary and stretched. I like it a lot this really great, uh, I called it lava. It's more like, it's like firestormy. This looks really cool. I'm not gonna lie, a big motivation for this version two is that I really, really didn't like the sort of fire preset I made in the first one. So I started messing around, got built up and we ended up with here and then that turned into all of version two. Then we've got a nice sort of wispy ghost one with some fog, this really bright electric red one called Wanda, this more charged electric looking one, plasma, wisp, and then a final sort of like higher energy cloudy one here. Now is as good a time as any to talk about how this preset ended up being a massive community effort. This preset tab, um, I had built out one specific way, but I was running into tons of issues. So I went to the broader DaVinci Resolve community, some custom uh, Discord groups. I reached out to tons of people and I got so much help, but it was uh, number 73, another great creator who's done tons of cool stuff in the Resolve community who helped me uh, finagle this situation a little bit. Um, so it actually works consistently and easily. I really like this presets tab, but you can choose any of these. I'll choose something like a Wanda. You can go back to the controls tab and here it gets more crazy. The first proto had four custom sources. Now we have eight. You can use custom text. You have a simple line, an ellipse or circle, a rectangle, a custom polygon with uh, sharp edges, polygon with smooth edges, a custom square where you can change any of these four points, and a star. And for all of these sources, you have advanced controls like all the text controls or something like if I just go back to the default rectangle, of course you can change the width and height of these, corner radius and the angle as well. Uh, but on uh, all of these, except for text and star, you also have this position and length settings. I can pull back length and there you see it only takes up half the shape and then you can use this position to sort of rotate that line around the shape. Super, super cool. And on some of these like line in those line controls, you do have uh, options for the specific points. But also if you come to the viewer and toggle on fusion overlay, it gets Pretty messy, <laughs> but here you see these are all the control points for all the different sources. 
I didn't figure out a way to limit these based on what you select, but you see if you find the correct control points for the source you're using, you can just click and drag these around anywhere you want in the scene. Now, star is a little different because that is off the specific uh, new shape tools. New, they've been around for like a year. But in star controls, you can change the number of points on that star and even the depth of that star to get some pretty wild looks. I'll round it out a bit. Ooh. And all of these can be animated with keyframes. And then moving on from source controls, things get more complicated. I made a choice when I was putting together this update to uh, give a lot more control to the end users. The first proto, um, I simplified control so that it was a little easier to understand, but I sacrificed a lot of flexibility. Of course, the user could always dive into Fusion and mess around with those nodes, but I know that can get very, very complicated. So I tried to balance it out a little bit. But because of that, we have a lot more controls here on the edit page. The first two are really important, core controls and glow controls. Generally, like you can see in this image, the core is this much uh, brighter concentrated right around the central line, and the glow is this outer, sometimes more foggy, or this extended glow area. And if I open up core, you see I have a lot of controls just for this. I can play with these really quick. You see uh, the core size affects that in a certain way. You've got options for the detail, how much things are distorted by, specific options for which direction they're distorted in, the overall scale of that distortion, and then individual uh, glow controls for both that core and glow. And then close to the same for glow, although these are uh, functioning in a little bit of a different way. But again, lots of options here to change the look of your scene. And although those are separate, um, they are both acted upon by the master noise settings. You can see if I change up this seethe or the overall seethe rate, which will be the ongoing animation in your scene, the seethe rate um, will be the speed of that ongoing animation and pretty some funky things like rotating the entire scene. Uh, two really technical controls are this discontinuous and inverted, and that is controlling a fast noise effect, which is driving all of this distortion, all of this like foggy texture. And this is one way to get a drastically different look. You see, if you uncheck these, you get a little more natural fog. You can toggle them on or toggle and invert um, just to get more different looks. Um, this is just more power the end user has. And then we finally get to the secret sauce for Proto V2, Tintensity. Tintensity is really like the core of this update. I rebuilt a lot of the effect around it, but the reason that this looks so much better than the first version is because of this tool. Tintensity is a fuse. It's a custom tool that was created uh, by David from the Learn Now FX channel that he put out there for free, just like Proto for anyone to use. And I was able to take that, package it up with all these things with his help, figuring out a lot of this. And with this driving some of like the glow and the colorization, um, it, it was so, so helpful. But because this was a custom fuse, an entirely new custom tool, um, it had to be packaged up in that different Lua way instead of a standard DRFX. But these controls also get a little technical. Um, you do have some pre-colorization as well as like post effect tools. Messing with this gain and gamma can get you in a little bit of trouble. Um, so they were a little risky putting in an effect like this. But again, more flexibility. Um, importantly, colorize as well. You can just click around here and you see all of these glows just look really good. And even coming out of that, you have a master hue slider. If you want to do some like really crazy strobe or rainbow effects, this is an area where you can just mess around for a really long time. Moving on after that, we have wind controls. Again, if you want the overall noise shifting in one direction, like it's fire rising or just energy wafting by, you can do that here. And then a new feature in version two is this effect mask controls. Watch this. By default, this is completely off, but if if you click mask, you'll see all of a sudden the inside of whatever source you selected goes back to completely black and you only see the effect on the outside or you could invert that and now the glow is only being seen on the inside. But again, you have additional controls um, for the core and the glow. So I can uncheck mask core and now you have that really uh, great looking like vibrant center, but the additional energy glow is only happening on the inside or only happening on the outside. This is the feature I pulled in from the original Sabre plugin from Video Copilot. I talked all about my love um, for that preset and for After Effects and uh, Video Copilot in general in the first uh, Sabre video. Uh, if you want more info about that, you can always check that out. But this is uh, one specific effect that I thought was like super, super helpful. 
Um, so I just rigged that up and I think it's super cool. And the last section of all these controls is I just added a option for a custom background. By default, it will be black. Um, but if you want this over a solid, you can always do that or you can just uncheck it and it will be over that black transparent layer. If you were to overlay this on any top of uh, other footage, you would see right through it. In fact, let's do that because we're getting close to something else. That's very cool. All right, I've dragged in some Halo gameplay here and you can see I can drag that proto right on top of it and because it's transparent, it overlays great. But now we get to something else that is very cool and that is the second effect packed inside Proto V2. Uh, you'll remember this proto came in as a generator, but if we go to effects, we can go back to a strong supplying company and we have another instance, Proto V2 effect. And I can drag that right on to this footage. And if I select that, make sure my inspector's open and come over to effects, I have a lot of those same proto controls. By default, this is like nice and hazy and all sorts of different stuff, but that is, uh, again, because of the effect we chose. If I jump over something like that wavy preset, it gets pretty intense, <laughs> but um, this is a uh, proto as an effect. So right at the top, you have these selection controls, and this is very important, uh, because what this effect is doing is it is first looking for edges in your scene and then driving those edges through proto and then layering them back on top of the original source footage. So if I clamp up this threshold and this uh, this is like a little bitmap slider down here, then you see it narrows that down to just a few edges. I'm gonna leave these mask controls here for now, but if I go down to like core and glow, again, you can pull down the size, which will really, yeah. I know overlaying a lot of these energy controls uh, is, is pretty popular, um, so I made this just a drag and drop effect. Again, you can always click through presets or dial it in yourself. I, it, it will be very easy for this to be overwhelming in a scene. Uh, just as an instance, I didn't dial in a lot of these, but if you click the uh, sunspot preset, um, you cannot see what's going on. But if you pull down things uh, like the core and glow size, then you get like a pretty cool, pretty cool look going on. Again, the gain as well. Then you can get some crazy custom looks over your footage. And hopping back up to this mask control, let me grab something like this wavy one. If I toggle on my fusion overlay controls, then you see this master ellipse. And if I go to controls, toggle on this mask, you see um, that now the effect is only coming through inside of that ellipse. If you want some of these cool energy uh, effects, but again, only uh, you want them directly on your footage, but only in a certain area of your footage, you have some real basic masking options here. But that's not all, again, because you can always drag this over footage, but you can also drag it over things like uh, images. You can also bring in something like just this YouTube logo. I will go ahead and scale this down. And if I drag my proto effect onto that, you'll see some interesting stuff happen because it's still going through the standard edge detect. So by default, it will look for edges in your scene, but I gave you one sneaky option in channel. You can change this from luminance to alpha, and now it is looking for the edges of that logo. If you choose alpha on any normal footage, you won't see anything because uh, your footage will normally be full screen. And if it has alpha layers in it, that could get interesting. Uh, but this is really useful in logos. If you want to add any cool energy effect to your logos, drag and drop proto on it, change this to alpha, and you're pretty good to go. This one looks great. You can have it be nice and electrical or lava E as well. All of these presets look pretty great. I really like this wisp one for just like this texture along the edges. Um, and it's super straightforward. This was a feature that was requested a ton on the first version. And while we have uh, one more uh, sort of effect to talk about in this package, um, it being this easy on the edit page, I am, I'm really uh, grateful to be able to put together for all of you. You have all these same in-depth controls if you wanna really get nitty gritty and create something new and unique. But, I said that's not all, because it's not all, we have one more thing packaged up in this update. I'm going to uh, come to effects, grab a fusion composition, drag that on my timeline and click this button to open the fusion page. Here, I'm just going to uh, click this polygon node. We can pull that up in viewer two. Uh, it's nothing yet, because we need to draw on it. And I will just create this wild squiggly line. And I will pull up border width, just a hair. So now, hey, yep, we got a squiggly line. I will connect that to my media out, and if I wanted to go back to the edit page, hey, we've got a squiggly line. But I can go back to the Fusion page, select that polygon node, click Shift Space, and I'm going to type in 
Proto V2. I had a few other Protos because I was messing around with it. Proto V2, again, effect. I will click enter and it will add that to the scene and apply that first preset. And from here, it's the same thing, except you can plug whatever you want into this. Any mass you can sort of create, uh, you can recreate sort of what I did um, with that uh, detect edges to use this over footage and have even more control. The only real custom control here is right at the top where it says outline solid. Uh, this you might tell looks pretty bright um, and that is if you can't really see it, but it is actually creating this effect on both sides of this shape. If you check that, uh, it treats it as a solid and just does it in the center. Um, for a different example, if I create just this standard ellipse, I pipe that into Proto, then you can see it does the entire circle as a source and it's pretty intense. Um, but if you come back to Proto, uncheck that, it just does the outline. So again, you have tons of flexibility here. You've got the presets again as a starting point, but full control. Whew. <laughs> okay, that is Proto as it stands right now. It's a big update. I'm gonna leave it like this for a while, just cause I think um, this preset especially, uh, I really like. I can't wait for you all to get Proto and start experimenting. Like I said, link in the description. And I have to once again give a massive thanks to David at Learn Now FX, um, especially for helping me uh, get Tintensity up and running in here and uh, number 73 um, for solving a lot of my uh, preset setting problems. <laughs> the DaVinci Resolve community um, is phenomenal and I am very happy to be a small part of it, uh, putting this uh, free uh, plugin out into the world. Thanks for watching. Go have fun with Proto. I'll see you next time.